Hey guys, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farms. I am out in my garden. I finally have some of the insect netting off the beds. Just kind of went through, got my hands dirty, was able to weed some, and just really getting a good look at my plants. And I thought, well, you know what? The last garden tour I did was a really quick garden tour before I headed out of town. And it's a beautiful day. So we're gonna do an in-depth garden tour, show you guys all of the veggies without the netting on there. Yeah, and I'm just super excited to dive in. I'm actually really glad that I'm able to come out here and take all the netting off and look because I'm doing Thanksgiving with my family. Uh, we have rented a cabin not that far from here, about an hour, so we're still able to come home and uh, take care of all the animals and everything like that. But I'm kind of, my sister and I were on the phone earlier and she was like, okay, like, do you have this in the garden and this in the garden? So I'm kind of getting a good inventory of what I have in the garden. That way I know what I'll be able to bring. And we're kind of planning our meals around that, uh, which is a really big reason why I like growing food. One day I would love to have our entire Thanksgiving meal, uh, you know, to where I grew it or we uh, raise the meat or whatever that may be. So this year I'm providing most of the vegetables. Also gonna be making a lot of homemade like breads and stuff like that. So it kind of gives me a good opportunity to come out here and just glance through the garden, write down my inventory, figure out what we're gonna cook. Uh, I did notice that my peas though were starting to put off blooms the other day. So I'm really excited about that. I remember planting several varieties as you can see. This is beautiful. I've got some blue ones coming up over here. I've never grown peas like this. You see the dirt. I can tell I weeded the garden just for you guys. Uh, so they're starting to come up. We had our first frost last night and they actually did okay. Um, I can tell their leaves have a little bit of damage, but overall they did fine. And even if they stopped growing now, they'd pick back up in the spring when it got warmer. So. Ideally, these are like, need to be trellis as you can see. Uh, but I think I'm just gonna let them go wild and see what happens. And we'll probably be okay. Look how pretty that is though. Here are some of the carrots that I've sown several times. They're coming up, you guys can see there. There's a nice, pretty, dark purple carrot. So some of them are getting bigger as some of the smaller ones are popping up. So I'm pretty pleased with the carrots. I certainly didn't get near as many carrots. I was hoping to have like high production in this bed and that just didn't happen. But I did sow carrots in several other beds throughout the garden. Uh, when I went in and replanted my beets and my turnips, I was like, oh, I'll just throw some carrots in there. So I think overall, I mean, the fact that carrots are growing, I mean, I'm gonna call that a win. I don't know, I just have the hardest time. I had one good carrot year and that was it. Every other year, I've just kind of flopped and we've had great rain. I mean, I've been watering these really well. We've been having really good uh, rainstorms where it rains for, you know, several hours and everything's getting good and soaked. So I don't know. I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about what's not doing well. And I'm just going to focus on what is doing well. But the fact that I'm even seeing some of these carrots come up, I'm like, ah, that's good enough. So all of this was actually left uncovered last night. We did have a freeze and I was like, well, I didn't get out here in enough time and they looked really wilty this morning but as the sun's popped up this afternoon all the dino kale looks great my red mustards are still doing okay one of them kind of took a beating but here's the scarlet kale um the collards over there are getting bigger this lettuce is taking a while um but it is coming up so i'm just gonna slowly let that just keep going this was actually the bed uh, that kind of inspired me to make the rabbit compost tea because I just knew that the soil was lacking and needing a little extra something. So as soon as that tea is ready, this is gonna be one of the first beds that I spray. And I really think it's going to help it a lot. I can just tell that the soil's needing something. I put pine shavings and I've never had a problem with that in the past, uh, but this year it just, I did not agree. Um, I really should have just done like an at-home pH soil test or something beforehand. Um, and just, you know, I've done the pine shavings for several years, but I think next year I'm probably just gonna do straw uh, just because I definitely can tell that my soil is saying, hey, <laughs> that's enough of that. My baby radishes are starting to pop up everywhere. These are all pretty established radishes, all of those in there. I'm gonna come through and harvest. As you can see, the beans hung on the first frost, I told you guys. 
Uh, they're certainly not, I mean, I'll just rip these up. We have a ton of beans, so I'm just gonna come through. I'm making a roasted chicken for dinner, and I'm gonna come through and grab some of the carrots, harvest all of these beans, and just know that, you know, we've got cool fronts coming in. They're not gonna last, and that's okay. So I'll just harvest these. And then since Thanksgiving is next week, if I have a bigger harvest, um, I may just can some of them. They'll probably actually just last if I threw them in a bowl uh, with a little bit of water. Like they'd probably last in the fridge until I needed to use them next week. Because um, we're going to our cabin on Tuesday. So even if I can't have them for Thanksgiving dinner, I could probably have them for a few other uh, dinners while we're there. But really glad I would encourage you guys if you're thinking about growing beans in the fall I know a lot of people don't because it is kind of a shorter window just do it like I've gotten a good mess of beans off of here we've had fresh beans several nights I had enough to put up a couple pints if I wanted to as far as canning and stuff like that so for me they're so late maintenance like it took me no time Nathan and I planted these you know <laughs> five ten minutes um, they were beautiful in the garden like i loved coming through the garden and seeing these trellises just full so i would say if you were thinking about growing green beans you know unless you're just a really really cold climate just plant them like they brought me a lot of joy so i would say that it was worth it even though i'm not going to have these long term like i am some of my other frost hardy things we have a lot of things going on in this bed this is the bed that i sow turnips beets some carrots as you can see they're coming up as well uh, here are my beets. Here are some turnips. This is a turnip. So I can see they're small, but I think that we're okay. This is one of the first turnips that I sowed that actually hung on and did really well. And look at that. This is a purple top turnip. So stinking pretty. I'm actually going to be harvesting this for dinner tonight and sauteing it up with some radishes. Got some beets snuck in over here. So overall, even though I had to re-sew this bed a couple times, everything's coming up really nicely and I'm really just pleased. And the turnips last year, I was harvesting turnips in the snow. So, you know, with our weather just kind of getting hot and cold, I think they're fine and they'll be big enough to where I can just harvest them throughout the dead of winter. I keep checking on my rutabagas uh, because I'm really ready to eat one of these. I was trying to convince my sister. She was like, I really want to make like a sweet potato, a casserole or some sort of potato. And I'm like, oh, I don't have potatoes, but I have rutabagas. Uh, so I keep trying to convince her that they taste just as good. Uh, so I will probably try to sneak those in the Thanksgiving dinner as well. Uh, yeah, they're looking really good though. All right, there she is in all her beauty. I'm not really sure how much bigger they get. Uh, that one's a pretty good size though. So several of these are pretty big. This one's probably the biggest. I think I remember though planting that one a bit earlier. But I think I'll definitely be able to probably harvest that one by Thanksgiving and then leave these and Nathan and I will just have them for dinner. When I was in California, my friend Natalie had these like golden rutabagas. They got really big. I think that that's what I thought I was buying because I saw Jessica uh, talk about these and I was like, oh yeah, I really want to get those. And so I guess I had thought that she had just had like your regular rutabagas. And then I found out when I was in California, oh, maybe that was a special kind. So I'm not sure if they will taste as good as those golden rutabagas uh, that Jess and Natalie have, but I'm still excited to try them. All of the peas I sowed here are starting to bloom as well. And I have some beans left in here that I am just saving the seeds from, so I'm just letting them say, Hey, June. Hey. What are you doing? Hey, you gonna come do a garden tour? Say hi, friends. Oh, can you tell your friends hi? <laughs> Truly, though, look at this. Look how beautiful that is. I will definitely say, I mean, granted, I haven't tasted these yet, but just based off of the sheer beauty that I'm finding in these, I say I will probably grow these again. I'll probably try them on a trellis, uh, just because I can tell that they really are trying to trellis, and I am not supporting that at all. It's just having them all kind of heavily sewed in here. 
all of the radishes that I sowed before I left for California, I sowed several rows. They are all coming up great. I probably need to go through and thin some. And then all of these are way past due. I am actually, as you can see, look how huge those are. We have been eating radishes with almost every meal and I still just have a ton. Uh, I sowed a ton, the kids sowed a ton. So I think what I'm gonna do Mama. is harvest a bunch of these and make fermented radishes. Nathan loves fermented foods. Oh, sorry. Nathan loves fer fermented foods. So I think that my plan is just to harvest a bunch of these and I mean, they're just, they're big. Cause y'all remember what these looked like whenever I harvested them a while ago they were probably about that big i mean look how much bigger they've gotten so i could even probably instead of like dicing these up these are so long i could probably do these in like sticks like i would a fermented pickle or something so i'm kind of excited about that i am pretty sure i told you guys that our local co-op had starts on sale like clearance out and i couldn't resist so i had bought a bunch of these and i just threw them in here as fillers and they're doing okay. I'm not really sure, you know, if they'll make in time. But they were like so cheap. I couldn't pass them up. So I've got them in these beds. And they've grown quite a bit since I put them in here too. Alright, truly the moment you all have been waiting for. Maybe just me. Maybe I'm just real excited to show you guys this. I had Nathan help me. We took all of the insect netting off of the big brassicas. <sighs> they look so good. I mean, I'll be making kimchi and sauerkraut in like, well, no time. And my broccoli looks good and I get to show you guys, I get to touch it, ah, so excited. So here are our beauties. This is the green cabbage. Look at that. They're so big. We can show you a little June comparison. Look how big those cabbages are compared to you. I mean, this is really, just a good size so I'm gonna be able to hopefully make a couple batches of kimchi with all this I'm gonna let them go a bit longer I could harvest these now but I'm not because I don't have the time right now to make kimchi with these so I'm doing the seed swap we're trying to gear up and get ready uh, for Thanksgiving and everything like that so I'm just gonna leave them in here but I think when I get back the week after Thanksgiving they will definitely be big enough uh, that I can use them and make some kimchi with them but I think they look good uh, and they're so low maintenance once we kind of got over the whole grasshopper issue we were dealing with they've just really thrived and even the damage that I had from the grasshoppers weren't horrible and i'm kind of glad that i did the beans too for the sheer fact that i'm noticing the beans having a lot more damage uh, from grasshoppers and my big cabbages having less damage so for me i'm like if i can plant the beans as kind of a trap plant if you will which you do that a lot uh, with tomatoes in particular i always plant like borage and things that are going to attract like the aphids and stuff that way they stay away from my production crops so we've harvested a good deal of beans but for me i'd rather the beans uh, be attacked by the grasshoppers because i know that they're not going to last through the frost and then they leave my good and established cabbages alone uh, that way you know i still have these that i know that they're going to last through the frost and everything all of my red cabbages are big as far as i mean especially when you think about this i mean this leaf Look at this, this leaf is huge, but the actual cabbage is just now starting to form. And so this over here, it's a pretty big plant, especially in comparison to my Chinese cabbages, but this is just now barely starting to form a little cabbage. And I don't know if that's typical. I've never grown uh, these types of red cabbages uh, before, and I didn't grow a lot. I think I've just got uh, two or three. There's one stuck over there. So I'm curious if I'm gonna get anything out of these. The plants are beautiful. Uh, you know, they're just really pretty. It's just, I planted these the same time I did the other ones. And as you can see, we just got a tiny, tiny little cabbage head here. So hopefully it'll make something. If you guys know me, you probably know I'm patient when it comes to certain things. And then certain things I'm like, oh gosh. This has taken a while. I've learned that sourdough starter I am finding takes a while. One of those things I'm really having to diligently ask for patience. So we planted all of these at the same time. All of our cabbages I planted in a day. The middle row is cauliflower. The end row is broccoli. Planted all of them the same day. 
my broccoli, I'll show you in a second, has this huge, most beautiful heads on them. They look great. My cauliflower, I'm like, good gracious. They are taking forever. And when I think about the grand scheme of things, like, I think it's always funny, and we joke about this often, like, as much time and money as you put into growing something, could you just buy it at the store? And for me, I take pride in growing things. I like growing things. But cauliflower is one of those things I'm like, goodness, I could just buy this at the store. All of my tiara cabbage, though, are doing fantastic. I mean, look at this. I think I will probably just grow these every stinking year. They all look great. They all have these huge uniform bulbs. I mean, really, they're just excelling. I'm having no pest damage, as you can see. Their leaves look great. They're just all uniform down in a little row here. Cannot recommend this enough. Nathan was helping me remove the tarp and he was like, babe, you're like growing cabbages. Like these look really good. I was like, thank you. Uh, so he really enjoys cabbage. We eat cabbage a lot. So when you think about something that we're having to source out and buy, I'm really glad that I decided to grow a lot of these uh, this year. And now I just know like, oh, when you have the right insect netting and you apply like the right, you put the right things in place, it makes it a lot easier. A lot of people deal with cabbage worms and those white butterflies and stuff like that. If you just buy the insect netting and you spend the money on the PVC pipe or the wire, it really does make a huge difference. Something that I used to not enjoy growing a lot, uh, cabbages, Brussels sprouts, things like that. I found that with the right steps in place, they're actually pretty fun to grow. I showed you all a glimpse of my broccoli before I left town. I can tell you guys now that they are way bigger than they were. Look at that huge head of broccoli. Don't you love how always it's like a hand comparison. That's how I try to show you guys reference for everything. They truly do just look so good. I love growing broccoli. It really is one of those low key maintenance plants uh, to grow. So this one's a bit smaller, but overall they all look really, really good. Oh my gosh, y'all. Look at that one. That one's like a Nathan hand. Well, no, probably not. They look so good. And I love how they have these little side shoots over here. So we'll just utilize all of these. Yeah. Oh, perfect. So, really, really excited about these. Can y'all see this? That is so big. I'm like in my sea of breasts because <laughs> I, I like it. Oh, uh, yeah. This is so gratifying. It's like, I love the fall garden because you plant it and it just doesn't take a lot of maintenance, really. And so I can not come out here for a couple days and I come out here and I'm like, oh my gosh, the broccoli is huge. <laughs> and our baby greens bed, as you can see, is no longer baby greens we've got some russian kale some different lettuces we've been using this in substitute of bread for like wraps and things like that lots of wonderful textures though and the bok choy i have some bigger leaves in here yeah look at that these have been really really nice i've loved having this just over sewed come and get it as i need it all the different textures I will probably be dabbling into more like pak choys and everything in that family. I've really enjoyed. But look at that good texture. And these have survived. I didn't cover this up last night at all and the frost didn't do anything. So we have been eating this every single day um, <laughs> with all sorts of things. I've been sauteing it. We've been putting the kales and smoothies and juice been eating all the different lettuces for breads and wraps and things I've got some bunch of onions over here going on and as soon as i start neglecting my green stalk y'all things start coming alive so i don't know i was just kind of like okay i'm gonna put a hold on the green stalk i'm gonna plant herbs in it next year I haven't really messed with it it's been watered by lovely mother nature and things are growing so all of my red mustards are doing well in here you can see here they're doing pretty well. I've got some bunch of onions, some cilantro. So I'm just letting that do what it's going to do. And I'm going to really put a good emphasis on that come the spring. Uh, but right now, I'm not really worried about it. 
Our broccolis in our hodgepodge bed are starting to sprout and do really well. I'm real excited to show you guys this bed because I've never been able to lift it well enough to give you guys a good view. We've kind of viewed the kohlrabi, uh, but not just a really good look. I harvested one the other night. And since I do get asked how I cook it, I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you what I did with it. The plan for this is to ferment little kohlrabi sticks like pickles. But I did wanted to try eating it like a potato that's usually what it's substituted for you can make a good like soup and stuff but what i did is i grated it down and then squeezed out all the liquids and i seasoned it really good i ended up sauteing it in the cast iron skillet with just a little bit of avocado oil and then i turned the oven on broil and i popped it in the oven uh, for just a few minutes probably three or four minutes I'm telling you, it tasted so good. It did not have the texture of a potato, so it didn't harden up, it didn't really get crunchy, but the flavor on it was divine. And so I have been trying to negotiate with Nathan, like, oh, can I have one more of those kohlrabis to do that again? He was like, as long as I have enough for my pickles, I don't care. So here they are. This one is ready to be harvested. It is a really good size. This little guy's got a bit longer to go. He's not quite there yet. This one over here can be harvested too. Look at that, such a good size. And then I finally noticed it, some form starting to take place on my purple ones. You can see there, it's definitely starting to look like a kohlrabi. Uh, this, <laughs> I noticed, I was like, oh, this doesn't look like a kohlrabi. Lo and behold, there's some surprise broccoli in there. Yeah, this one in here is actually getting pretty big. Can you guys see that? Look at that. A good, a good size so I'm excited I'm excited to try the purple ones and see if there's any like taste difference or if it's truly really just like a color thing and y'all my Brussels sprouts are starting to look like Brussels sprouts uh, that is a labor of love that I do for my sweet husband I grow these or I attempt to grow these for him uh, several times never with the best of luck but I think I'm gonna be successful this year and I think I'm gonna have one happy husband so they're all starting to get those little nubs, which are baby Brussels starting to happen. Look at that. Look at that little baby Brussel. How sweet. Y'all, I'm gonna make my husband proud. And then the end of this bed, I did half broccoli I had left over, which is starting to come to head. And then I believe over here, these were cauliflowers. I can tell just by how that leaf's doing its business. And I, they're making, look down there. It's making little heads. It's just taking its time. And that's what I believe the bottom three plants are over here. You know, it always amazes me how much food you can crank out. I grow a lot of food in my garden in the spring and summer. But I've never really utilized my garden to its full potential during the fall and the winter growing season. Uh, one, our summers are a bit hectic, <laughs> so I usually just take that time and take a break. But this year I knew I really wanted to be intentional with growing this fall and winter. And I'm so glad I did because I don't have, I mean I do, I have a lot of growing space, but I don't have as much as some people do. And my beds are smaller and we just used, you know, scrap material that we got for free. And so knowing that I'm able to crank out this much food, I'm kind of even like impressed with myself a little. I'm like, oh, you go girl. And so I just want to take a minute and encourage you, even if it's not this skill, even if it's in containers, I've, you know, you can grow a lot of food in containers, a lots of root vegetables. There's a lot of things that you see in my garden that can be applicable to you. Uh, and whatever growing space that you're working with. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you're thinking about growing food, just do it. <laughs> I, I get so excited about walking out in my garden and being like, man, I am cranking out a lot of food in a pretty small space in my backyard. And that is extremely, extremely gratifying. Thank you guys so much bye for hanging bye. out with me in the garden today. <laughs> Tell them, say bye-bye. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.